Welcome to another example from Chapter 6 using centripetal acceleration. In this example, we have a vertical circle. So we imagine that we're holding a string and we have a mass that is going around in a vertical circle. So it's going up and then back down again. And part A is going to ask at the bottom of the circle. So if we're at the bottom of the circle here, we're moving tangent to the circle, and our speed is 6 meters per second in this example. So for part A, we have that the mass is 2 kilograms, the radius of the circle is the length of the string, just like example B, 80 centimeters is equal to 0 0.8 meters, and we're told that the velocity is 6 meters per second. Now important, we need to draw the free body diagram for the specific situation of being at the bottom of the circle. So we've drawn it here on the left. We have gravity pulling us downwards, because that's what gravity is always going to do when we're here on the surface of Earth. So m times g, 2 times 9.8, we get 19. 0.6 newtons. And here at the bottom of the circle, the tension is pointing up towards the center of the circle. We have tension up by looking at the situation and recognizing how ropes always pull. Now here's the important part. The acceleration, the centripetal acceleration has to point towards the center, which for the bottom of the circle, for part A, is upwards. So when we look at the forces, in this case, because it is a vertical circle, we're looking at the net forces in the y direction, we will have that those net forces are equal to mass times centripetal acceleration. Now, just like we practiced throughout chapter 4 and chapter 5, when we are figuring out the net forces, we are taking the forces in the direction of acceleration, so in this case, tension, minus forces that are opposite the direction of acceleration, in this case, gravity. And then we can write, instead of a centripetal acceleration, we know that centripetal acceleration can be v squared over r, or it can be r omega squared. In this case, because we have v and we have r, we'll use v squared over r. Each time, the one that we choose is going to be based on what we already have to make our lives easier. In example 6b, it was r omega squared because we already had omega. Here in example 6c, we have v squared over r because we already have v. So we can plug in what we have. Tension minus 19.6 equals 2 times 6 squared over 0.8. Now we're going to add 19.6 to both sides so that tension is all by itself. So this 2 times 6 squared over 0.8, that's 90. We've added 19.6 to both sides, so it's over here. And so we get 109.6, which is perfectly fine. It's also approximately 110 newtons. So that's our answer to part A. Pretty big tension um, because we need the rope to be able to pull the block up against gravity and get it to um, move upwards after that point. All right, part B. Part B is now saying that instead of having it at the bottom, so I'm going to erase this picture. All right, so for part B, we have the same circle and the same mass, but now it is at the top of its circle. And as it goes around tangent to the circle, it is now traveling at 3 meters per second. So we still have mass is 2 kilograms. We still have that the radius is 0 0.8 meters. But it's going a little bit slower here at the top, 3 meters per second. All right, so we have to draw a new free body diagram. This is important because we have changed the situation here. We have gravity pointing downwards, 
because gravity always points down, and because it's the same mass, it is still 19.6 newtons. But now if we look at where the tension in the rope is, the rope is pulling it downwards as well. So tension is also downwards here. And that's all of the forces acting. So when we write F net Y equals M A centripetal, both of these forces are in the direction of acceleration towards the center is in this case down. And so we will have tension plus gravity equals m v squared over r. I need us to understand the difference here. A lot of students throughout chapter 4 and chapter 5 asked questions like, why are we adding forces in some cases and subtracting in others? And I need us to recognize that it is always based on the drawing that we've made of where they point. And it's always based on the fundamental statement that forces in the direction of acceleration we add and forces opposite the direction of acceleration we subtract. Because we're always setting this up to find the amount of acceleration, the size of it. All right, so tension here, kind of near the bottom of the screen, tension is equal to 2 times 3 squared over 0 0.8 minus the 19.6. And now we have a very small number here. We have 22.5 minus 19.6, which gives us a total of 2.9 newtons. It is a very small tension here. And if we were going a little bit slower, the string wouldn't even make it to the top of a circle. If you have the ability to tie something um, to a string in your house that won't hurt anyone or hurt your um, belongings, try swinging it around very, very slowly until the point where you ca can no longer make a circular motion. It'll drop down because it's not, it doesn't have enough tension in the string to keep it moving in a circle. It needs to be going faster for that to happen. The lecture slides talk about a, um, toy half loop ride, um, and some of the other situations that can happen if we go too fast or too slow given certain circumstances. So make sure that you review those if, if that doesn't sound familiar to us. But I do want us to recognize that this pair of answers should start to help us to understand why in certain situations we have to make sure that we're going fast enough, like in a roller coaster, or why in certain situations, which we'll start to see in some of the upcoming examples, if we go too fast, we lose um, traction. So if you go over a um, hill in your car a little bit too fast, you might um, catch a little bit of air. So we'll see that in an upcoming video. So I will see you in those next examples.